Blavatsky teaches, quote, Buddha's mother was Maya, or Maya Deva, married to her husband, yet an immaculate virgin. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, Buddha was born of a virgin Maya. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Gautama Buddha crushes the serpent's head, i.e. like Jesus, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, he crushed the serpent's head, as was traditionally said about Jesus, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Buddha abolishes idolatry, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes and says, quote, Buddha abolished idolatry, unquote. Acharya S. or Dorothy M. Murdoch obviously quotes profusely from Blavatsky and externalizes this theosophic doctrine to the public. She has many minions who blindly support her New Age propaganda. If you don't believe that she advocates the abolition of Christianity and the same New Age of Aquarius that Theosophy, Freemasonry, the Illuminati, and the UN want, listen to the following and realize that she is double speaking or giving mixed messages. She does the Masonic scheme order up cow or order out of chaos. She is blaming theists, namely Christians, for the problems of the world and that the New Age will cure all of the evil from those bad Christians out there. However, she is covering up the fact that the ones causing the chaos right now are the Theosophist Freemasons who are causing the chaos in order to bring about their order. Order out of chaos scheme. They artificially create the crisis, i.e. war, destruction, social problems, drugs, wickedness in the media, etc. Then they blame the Christians and the current ideologies and offer the New Age solution this is what Acharya, the Theosophist, is promoting here. She says, quote, But the future is now, and the maneuvers are being unveiled. As far as Christianity's role in this new age, Carpenter states, quote, Christianity, therefore, as I say, must either now come frankly forward and acknowledge its parentage from the great order of the past, seek to rehabilitate that, and carry mankind one step forward in the path of evolution, or else it must perish. There is no alternative. Despite the vilification of the so-called New Age movement, the fact is we are entering into a New Age. The age referred to in the Gospel tale is that of Pisces, and through contrivance and duplicity, coercion and slaughter, the fish god Jesus, the Piscean solar avatar, has indeed been with us. But now it is the close of the age, and his time is over. As Hancock says, we live today in an astrological no-man's land, at the end of the age of Pisces on the threshold of the new age of Aquarius. Traditionally, these times of transition between one age and the next have been regarded as ill-omened. Ill-omened verily as the ongoing destruction of the earth and the endless warfare over ideology will indeed produce the Armageddon so long awaited and planned by those who cannot live for today but must look towards an afterlife. By realizing the cultural unity revealed behind the Christ conspiracy, however, Humanity can pull together and prevent this fall to create a better world. Ladies and gentlemen, the New World Order has no intention of creating a better world. They are just baiting the public with empty promises of a New Age utopia. In reality, the elite are vicious. They are the ones who cause the wars. They are the ones who assassinate the real truth seekers. They are the ones with the wealth and the power who attend Bohemian Grove and do the satanic rituals. It's time to wake up and know your enemy. The new age will be manufactured in order to unify the world. This is what 2012 is about. That is why that is being pushed on the public so profusely. Don't fall for it. In agreement with Blavatsky with respect to Satan, Acharya S. states, Perhaps the devil brings peace and not a sword to humanity. Considering how many people have been killed in the name of God and not the devil, Maybe the world is worshipping the wrong entity. In fact, Acharya's claims about Horus where she externalizes this Illuminati view that Christ is the sun god instead of lighter pagans corrupting certain things have infiltrated the minds of the major media outlets. This New Age theosophic view has been officially externalized on major daytime television broadcasting. I'm Adam Blavatsky, one of the greatest uh, scholars the world has ever known writes in this way she says the appellation Satan in Hebrew belongs by right to the first and cruelest adversary of all other gods Jehovah not in the serpent which spoke only words of sympathy and wisdom
Now, even if we accept any variation of Lucifer symbolism, in this quote, it's clear that Sarin agrees with Blavatsky, the greatest scholar the world has ever known, that what we call God should be called Satan, and the serpent is actually our good friend. In this case, he wants us to think that the serpent represents the Lemarians, not women. Lemarians, by the way, is a word that entered into our lexicon through Helena Blavatsky. I would also offer a definition of Luciferianism, which is, Luciferianism can be understood best as a belief system that venerates the essential characteristics that are affixed to Lucifer. Uh, that I don't know anything about, but uh, I can certainly tell you that those quotes that have been taken from the book of Magic and Theory and Practice have been totally misinterpreted. This is a case in point I was just talking to you about, Doug, is that people take one little line from Magic and Theory and Practice about the child sacrifices and so on without, without even pre-printing the whole passage. People need to go to that area of the book. In fact, they need to go to the book and read it about the incredible, beautiful, the spirituality of that man and of that book have yet to be brought out. The incredible, beautiful, the spirituality of that man and of that book have yet to be brought out. Even if you took this out of context, though, I mean, just logically speaking, you, you're, you're apologizing for something that is uh, uh, very clearly a, a huge part of this New World Order agenda. I mean, people have spent a lot of time implicating Aleister Crowley as a major player in this New World Order game, and here is uh, this guy uh, defending the hell out of this guy. I want to continue to show you some of Tassarian's beliefs and how they are Masonic to the core right down to his hope for reducing the population and a dislike of the idea of man as the head of the family and getting rid of all borders and national sovereignty. He will go through a list of things that he implies came into the world through the idea of the Hebrew God in the Bible. He also throws in some obviously bad ideas that I guess he wants you to think that God likes. We have culture based on acquired inheritance. We have walled cities, enclosed cities. We have the domestication of animals. We have meat diet. We have the family organization now, with the male at the head. We have the phenomenon of overpopulation. Even the idea of suggesting that in a utopia, no one would eat meat is interesting to me. Because in the Bible, it makes a vivid description of what the New World Order system will look like. And oddly, Tassarian's hope for humanity is close to what we see presented here. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. There will, according to the Bible, be a prohibition of eating meat and a prohibition from the standard family unit. These are two examples of Tassarian's desires for the world, matching up exactly as the overlords he claims to expose. Here's some more examples of Tassarian subtly indoctrinating people into Freemasonic thought. Well, the great geomanticists of the world understood that there's a feng shui of the earth as well. What happens if you want to suppress some good energy that's flowing? Put an obelisk there, put a statue, put a hideous piece of modern art. That'll do the trick, all right. And what happens if you're a decent individual and you're aware of spiritual earth energy and you want to conduct powerful vortexes of energy? Same thing, you can put a statue or an obelisk or a round circle or a stone circle there to help to transmute and transmit that energy. One of the ancient structures that could be used in this revivification process is the Great Pyramid at Giza. It was known by those who've made a study. Tassarian runs a mystery school in which he apparently teaches people to do different types of divination and other types of ritual. I say that this is what we must not do. Tassarian says that it is by magic ritual that these entities are gaining access to our dimension, and it is by them gaining access into our dimension that are causing all the troubles that we are facing. So by logical deduction, we must not practice magic rituals. And once they do gain access to this dimension, there is only one way to get them out, and Tassarian certainly is not teaching that. I don't know if you guys understand what's going on here. Um, People like Peter Joseph, Acharya S., and Jordan Maxwell are pushing these esoteric views of the Bible on us. So we accept what Lucius Trust and the New World Order is going to do, their order out of chaos scheme. They're waiting for their new Christ, not Jesus Christ's second coming, but their new Christ from their new age, their new age religion. They want to get you to accept it. Remember Alice Bailey said that they're going to be externalizing the information that the hierarchy had?